And when you think you're done, you're not. One more uh, connection point here to the uh, resistor board. And now we're done. Okay, when I left off, I uh, cleaned up another... It wasn't a mistake yet, but I just had not tied in this uh, one connection back over here to the uh, grid. I think on the uh, 77 tube. Anyway, you're looking at the uh, oscillator coil for the radio. And it mounts right here in this area. And uh, you can see here with the old leads, this thing needs some... Uh, some TLC so uh, I'm gonna go in here use my third hand and uh, just go ahead and dress everything up with some new leads study the schematic just like we did over here for L3 and uh, let's get this thing tied in I had mentioned the uh, oscillator coil here and before I uh, go ahead and take the uh, soldering iron to this I did check it one more time and uh, just make certain that my uh, DC resistance was close to uh, what I recorded back uh, a week ago, and it is. When you're looking at these schematic drawings, in most cases, um, and I think this is the case for this one, this is like a rear view, and that's what I'm showing right here. So you can see just a little bit of red cloth left here. This should be our B plus and the pin number two location which connects back down to number four here and then you can see continuity between number one and number three and that's what I have. Now one thing interesting about this uh, coil if I read between two and four I have about uh, just under two ohms and then the other side of the coil between one and three about uh, seven ohms or just under that and the inductance is higher on 1 and 3. Let's uh, look at the schematic just for a moment. Here's the area that I'm going to uh, focus on here. That being L5, the oscillator coil. And I had already mentioned pin number 2 or location number 2 here on the oscillator coil uh, appears to be the B+, plus, just based on the red cloth. And you can see I have not tied in yet, but it's definitely my B plus frame running through pin 2, runs through the coil number 4, back up through the uh, IF transformer, back over to the plate of the 6A7. So what I'll do when I dress this up, 2 and 4 will be dressed out with red leads. Number 1 I'm going to go ahead and make it black since it goes directly to ground. And if I get this wrong, of course, we'll just have to switch everything up if the uh, oscillator fails to work. You can see in the schematic itself and the other drawing that we were referring to is showing equal number of turns by the number of loops. But of course that's not the case unless I've got a, a cold solder joint. So let me get this in the uh, third hand and do what I talked about, heat up these connections, get some new leads attached, and repeat my DC resistance measurements. Okay guys, uh, cleaned up best I could here without taking a chance of uh, damaging the uh, coil. Got the new leads placed on and this will be location uh, number two number four and this will be the uh, B plus side this will go back to this uh, picoferret capacitor here I think I put a 220 in it's called out on the schematic as a 250 if I recall correctly and then the other is a uh, ground connection back to the chassis Let's get this thing uh, tied in real quick. Capacitor C4, uh, one of the variable trimmers, is also part of this equation, so uh, I need to go ahead and get it mounted. I'm going to clean up the uh, mica just like I did on the other best I can, uh, just loosening the uh, screw here and spraying a little cleaner down in there and let it dry. 
And then I want to clean up these uh, solder connections here. And this may or may not show up here. C4 mounts right here. With this chassis being so tight, I couldn't get in here and do the work without having my hands blocking the uh, view. But you can see I've got all the uh, tie-ins now off of the uh, L5 oscillator coil. And I'll uh, go back to the schematic here in just a moment. But I've uh, got my uh, ground connection, my uh, B+, plus, this one side over here. I've just got it tacked in to, what, C4? The capacitor here. Uh, there's some additional uh, leads that need to be uh, mounted here. And then uh, my primary B plus is routed here and ties back in at this point. And that little, uh, what used to be a mica cap, is uh, mounted right here. I think I had noted I was going to use a yellow lead. But that's the uh, tie-in point here. Let me uh, grab the schematic here and just reference what's been done so far. Okay, here's the uh, tie-in point that I just mentioned. This uh, 250 picofarad cap. I went back with a uh, 220. Uh, tied in to uh, location point number three on the oscillator coil. And then you can see uh, number one goes to ground. You'll also note here that, that yellow lead will have another connection point there for the uh, tuning condenser itself. Let's see if I move back over here to the uh, other side of the oscillator coil. I came off the uh, connection of uh, R8 back over here to point 2 and then uh, completed this uh, next loop here for point four back up here to this tie-in to the grid of the 6A7 in addition you saw that loop that I ran back over to uh, C4 let me get this highlighted and we'll focus on what's uh, remaining here And that's where we stop at uh, C4. You can see we've still got to get L2 tied in. And then back here, I've got the uh, ground connection made. Back here through the oscillator coil. Back to that uh, capacitor here. But that still leaves this area right here. That should be the tuning condenser. My next tie-in point will be here off of uh, C4 Charlie 4. That's that trimmer that we just mounted. We've got this side here tied in. But let's tie the uh, side in here that goes back to the plate, which is indicated here. Pin number 2 on the 6A7, 6 alpha 7 and that will complete this small section here. Let's look under the uh, chassis here and see where those uh, locations are. The 6A7 tube resides here and this will be really difficult to see now most likely but uh, pin number one, pin number two and you'll see this existing cloth covered red lead that comes out here. If it's long enough, we'll tie it back in to this point right here, which is uh, C4. Let me look at the uh, wire management here and see if that uh, lead needs to be replaced or if we can salvage it. The uh, lead's going to be able to be used here, so uh, let me just give this a little haircut. 
use some alcohol here and just clean up the conductor and get it soldered in. We've got the lead tied in, the existing lead here to uh, capacitor C4, one of the variable trimmers. Back over here to the uh, plate of the uh, 6A7, which happens to be pin number 2. And the location here that we were working was from C4. Back over to the plate here of the 6A7. You can see the uh, L2 coil still needs to be tied in also. That's uh, pretty much what we've got left in addition to the pre-selector coil on the top of the chassis as well as the uh, tuning condenser. I'm going to go ahead and get C5 mounted in the chassis. We'll see if time permits that I can get this tied in. Back it down here at least to this one location. And then uh, we'll save uh, L2, this coil, for a, another day and there should be a grid wire attached here because this will be grid number one closest to the uh, cathode here. Let me go grab capacitor C5 and let's uh, take a look at it. So here's C5 and it does have the uh, grid wire attached. Let me go ahead and uh, get this cleaned up also. You can see the mess we've got here and I was thinking about replacing this grid wire but actually it's not in bad shape that's uh, just more of the beeswax I believe on there I'll take a look at it a little bit closer and then I'll back this uh, screw out right here get some more cleaner down in here in the mica and clean that out get this remounted you can see here I got C5 remounted don't have anything tied to this side of the capacitor but that grid lead wire I've got it uh, just running down through here where the speaker comes up I know this hole's not used because I didn't desolder anything and the uh, grid cap is still attached so the other option it may have been routed down through here we'll uh, look at that later and clean that up as needed uh, let's look at the schematic real quick and then we'll look at this uh, tie-in point as well for the other side of uh, capacitor C5. Here's the area I was working in, C5. And you can see this represents that grid wire lead here coming back across. So let me go ahead and get that highlighted between this point. And then uh, you can see the other side of our tie-in of C5. Um, goes back down here to what R3 if I'm reading the schematic correctly. We'll come back, pick up on L2 and uh, complete this connection and uh, we're just about home. Hopefully within a few days of uh, bringing this thing back up here. Thanks again for watching folks.